Hi everyone. <clears throat> Talk you through the uh, Identify Ions and Aqueous Solutions uh, lab. All right, so obviously first thing to do, pretty much as always, just go check out GRP 101, click on start here and you'll find, you know, what's in front of us here. Okay, this one does run exclusively through Pivot, but as is typical, they give you kind of a brief kind of introduction over the GRP 101. I'm going to add to that. Okay, so <clears throat> first things first, you know, you're going to go to Pivot and do the experiment. There are videos there, there are questions, and to be honest, all the videos and questions are essentially identical in many ways to what's in the Aqueous Solutions packet. Okay, so I'm going to give you a little bit of a checklist down here. Complete Aqueous Solutions lecture video and packet first. <laughs> okay, so you know, it's typical what we do, but just to remind you, always complete the lecture video first, and that really covers this stuff in a lot of detail, okay? So you'll follow that video, you'll learn how to do the writing and balancing of ionic equations in that video, and then this really, to be honest, this video, this rather, this assignment is just practice of that, okay? But they give you some videos to just see it happening before your eyes as well, okay? Um, <clears throat> Make sure before doing the video also you try a few homework questions, okay? Because one of the homework questions, and I can't remember the number, but when you look you'll see it, it involves creating a couple of tables, okay? So you, it's a bit like <laughs> back in the day you had a train timetable, right? Or it became a battleship or something. So you have you know, plus signs across the top and minus signs down the side. And then, you know, what would happen if you combine them, all right? So would you get a precipitate, yes or no? And then would that precipitate be a... Be, uh, well, what its, what, what its formula be. Okay, and I'll show you a little bit of a demo on that in a second. Okay, but try the homework. And then, you know, if you're still not 100% on that, and I only saw two folks at office hour this week, okay, come to office hour, you know, Thursday morning, okay, on Teams, right? And if you still haven't joined Teams, I'm not going to give you a hard time. Just, you know, follow the week one instructions for joining teams and I really want to see you there. I had a couple of folks last time and I think they got a lot out of it and um, you know that's really where you can talk to me in person right it doesn't really work chemistry doesn't work very well by email right it doesn't really work by email uh, the best way to has, is to have a conversation all right so if you're struggling a little bit definitely look into an office hour and I have actually um, at the time of writing I just put up a quick well, it wasn't really a true survey, but I put up, up a quick discussion post. If anybody's interested in a Tuesday office hour, because they can't make the Thursday, just you know, post at Canvas, and if we get a few more people up there who want to commit to that, I'll definitely do it. Okay, so <clears throat> a little bit about your uh, experiment. So when you look at your Aqueous Solutions uh, video lecture and the notes, you're introduced to this solubility chart. Okay, now I'm going to talk about what I talk about in the video here one more time and give an example, okay, because this is the very fundamental thing you need to understand to do the lab, okay. So it turns out that some things are soluble. So we know, for example, that sodium chloride, and we write that, right, that means sodium chloride table salt dissolves in water, right, so aqueous, yeah. Although we know other things, calcium carbonate is chalk, right? Chalk does not dissolve. And I'll put that bracket there just to show you. And that would be a solid. So when you do your ionic equations, remember they swap partners, how do you know which one? Well, first you have to kind of identify the products just by swapping over, which we'll show you again in a second. And then, hey, once you make those products, how do you know if it's a solid or an aqueous? Well, it comes down to using a solubility chart, right? Okay, and I like to think about things that are generally soluble, right? So that means they'll have aqueous on the end, all right? So anything with nitrate on the end, so for example, sodium nitrate would be aqueous if we formed it in a reaction because all nitrate containing ionic compounds are soluble and there are no exceptions. That's a key thing, all right? Then this is your, if you look here, the halides, these are in the same column in the periodic table, they have the same chemistry, they all dissolve, right? Sodium chloride, sodium bromide would also dissolve. 
They all dissolve, but there are three exceptions, and those are the ones you know from your chloride flow chart, right? So these are the only ones that form solids. That's how, in step one of that flow chart, we separate out these three from all other chlorides, because all other chlorides would be solution one, right? And these would be in residue one. All right. Okay, and then sulfates, again, generally soluble. So sodium sulfate would be aqueous, okay? But there are a few exceptions, yeah? So similar to the halides that barium swapped out, this is a classic, so barium sulfate would be a solid, okay? So get familiar with the solubility chart, know how to use it, practice, 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 and I go over that in some detail in that video lecture, okay? Now, as you notice, you start to get exceptions, right? So as things get more insoluble, right? So we keep swapping out the, the iron on the back here, the exceptions get bigger and bigger, and eventually we get to the point where the number of exceptions was too large. So what we actually do, we flip the table upside down, and we come at it from the other way, and kind of make another table list of things that are insoluble, which would be generally solids, right? Okay, so carbonates, phosphates, and hydroxides are generally solids, right? As we just saw, calcium carbonate is a solid because carbonate's in the generally insoluble or solid group, right? Okay, so if we made calcium carbonate, we'd write a little s next to it in our balanced equation. There are exceptions, however. Ammonium in group one, so that's the lithium group, right? Okay, so for example, sodium carbonate would be aqueous. Sodium hydrogen carbonate, we can mix and match the ions from group one there. That's baking powder, that dissolves also. All right, so similar, phosphates and carbonates, generally solids, but there's a few exceptions, ammonium and group one. Hydroxides, you have gotta take it on a case by case basis. All right, okay, so lots of things are the soluble and lots of things that are the insoluble. Hydroxide is kind of in the middle. All right, so let's give you, give you a worked example. All right, let's just pick some random things. Mix solutions of, let's pick a classic, right? Silver nitrate and let's say something like, let's make it interesting, let's make it interesting. Let's make calcium chloride. Okay, so we're mixing those two solutions, right? Okay, now it says they're solutions, and they have to be solutions when you mix them because they have to kind of swap partners, right? And they can only do that when they're dissolved. But it's names to formulas, right? So silver nitrate, it's going to be AG. Do not <laughs> include charges in formulas unless they're separate, right? Remember that? Okay. Silver nitrate. Now, I like to write my molecular ions in brackets. You don't have to do that if it's one of them, but you can, right? So that's silver and nitrate. Look at my chart here real quick. Well, all nitrates are soluble, so that's aqueous. Again, it must be soluble because it's a reactant, but we can just confirm, right? And calcium chloride. So calcium, remember, is a plus two ion. Chloride's a minus one, so I need two of them, okay? Name, remember how to balance. Names to formulas, like the vertical. And then we're about, you know, so names to formulas first, and then we'll worry about numbers in front, right? Calcium chloride has a formula, calcium chloride, Cl2, because it's two minus ones, cancel the plus two. Chlorides, as we see, generally soluble. These are exceptions. Calcium is not an exception. Okay. Now, <laughs> don't run before you walk, right? Now, when you do one of these reactions, you swap partners, and then you write the formula, right? So. Don't try and do two things at once. Don't try and balance it on the fly, right? Just say to yourself, hey, when I swap the partners, what names do I get? I'm going to get calcium what? Calcium nitrate, right? Because calcium plus is going to hook up with nitrate minus. So calcium nitrate. Now, if you wrote that as the formula, you'd be wrong, right? Because that's a minus one. That's a plus two. I need two of those. All nitrates are aqueous. All right. Plus, we're in that room a little bit. What's left? Silver and chloride, plus one, minus one. Ah, that one is the solid. All right, so that's an unbalanced ionic equation right now, okay? You would balance it in a normal way, if you wish, by counting number of atoms each side. But hey, because it's ionic, fully ionic, just count the number of ions. How many silvers? One, one, okay. How many nitrates? Two, oh, two. So I've got to put a two in front, right? Two silvers, 
two silvers, two chlorides, two chlorides, one calcium, one calcium. Okay, so that's a balanced ionic equation. Okay, so recap, use the solubility chart. Okay, so you know, it might be a good idea to print that one out before you try this and just keep it on the side or just have that page open in the book or you know, in the notes or wherever it is, right? So have, you, have your chart ready and then remember the golden rule of balanced equations, names to formulas, names to formulas, product and reactant, get the formulas right and then balance. Okay, that's how I'm able to get the correct stoichiometry here and the correct formulas. It's calcium nitrate with two nitrates, right? Not one, which you may be tempted to do incorrectly. Okay, so names to formulas, then balance. All right, now again, try that um, homework question with the table. That's very, very similar to what you'll see in your lab. Set yourself up for success, right? So try the, the lecture, the homework, and then look at the, the lab here. Okay, hope that, hopefully that makes sense. And remember, <laughs> office hour if you uh, still need a clarification on any of this. And that's Thursday at 9 on Teams. Okay, stop there. See you next time.